bad that way. Okay, right. Um, I know roughly where you all are. I'm trying to get my mind back into the gear here at all. But um, everybody, I think, that's on, on here at the moment is definitely through a, a assessment one and is either working on or about or, or, or in the process of finishing assessment two. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, the, um, the situation, my, my, my idea, if you remember last, last week, we went over the additional stuff that you need to do in order to finish in order to finish the report. Okay, so that's maybe a good starting point. And that is anybody having any problems finishing off finishing off the report? Um, I was having a problem, as you know, in my appendices. Right. Okay. What is it? What 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 is the problem? Is it, is it trying to get the image? Is it trying to get the images into the appendices, Ashley? Uh, what I was trying to do was get the Facebook page or whatever media each company was using and put that into my appendices, but to show that media you don't know how, you don't know how to do that. Right, okay. Well, if it's a case of trying to move things across from, if you're trying to get, a, what, 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 if you're trying to get it through the screen, it's what we call a screen dump. And in order, in order to do that, you need to put it, you need to put, once you've got the thing you want on screen, you need to, put, you need to press the shift button and hold it down. And also above, uh, roughly above the, the number pad, you'll see there's a key at the top, it's got PRTSCR on it. It's a print screen button. You have to hold those two down at the one time, and then that'll give you an image of what this, uh, what's actually on your screen. All right, okay, right, okay. Then, no what idea, then. Right, no idea then. That's all you do, but then from there, then all you need to do is basically go in and get rid of it. it, it just get like a picture and go in and get rid of any, any, any things in the picture that you don't need. Right. Okay, okay and, then, and then it's a case of just cutting and pasting. Once you've done that, it's a case of inserting it into your appendix, that'll be you. Right, that's fine. I'll try okay. the night then. Try the day. Give right. it a go, give it a go, exactly. Right. I get stuck, I'll give you an email. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay. Right, okay. <laughs> over the over the rest of you, how are we doing? Uh, Zane, how are things going? Yeah, fine. Right, okay, so where are you work wise? Because I know and I, I know you're through the first one. Um how are you getting on with I've the how started, you I've started the report? Uh, uh, I've started the report. Right, okay. How far how far on are you? I right, fine. See the work that you uh, last week you told us about I'm following that. I'm Okay. Just this one's due when it's in for. Uh, well, well, it's, it's actually due in this Friday. Is it? Yeah. Okay, but what I suggest you do is, if you want me to double check to see exactly where you are with things, send it, send it to me to check it, and then I can give you feedback to help you. Right, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Okay, on that one. Okay, Tasha, how are things with yourself? Starting again, though. Of it. You, you're not needing any help, so how far on are you with this? Uh, I'm near the end of it. Right, okay, are you talking about the report? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, okay, uh, bear in mind that the video from last week on YouTube, the red one, gives you all the details on how to finish things off. For instance, like we're, talk we're, talk we're talking about uh, app appendices, we are still there. You've got details on that, you've got details on everything from the, the title page all the way through. If you just follow it step by step, and what a lot of people were doing was they were looking at it, pausing it, actually doing it in the report, and then going back and starting it again, and doing it bit by bit. If you've got any issues, please get back to me on it, okay? Right. Is my report all right, apart from, apart from appendices then? It's looking, it's looking not too bad, Ashley. As I mentioned in the email, about layout was wrong. Uh, it's very slight problems with layout. We can deal with that after we get your appendix sorted, okay? All right, no bother. Okay. okay. Right. Scott, how's that? how are things going with you? Fine, I'm just um, at the recommendations. So okay. I'm going to try and get that finished today, build the rest of the report, and then I'll send it in, and then if I need to change anything and whatnot, then. Okay, as I say, as I say if, you, if you actually look at the, um, if you have a, as I said, if you have a look at the, the, 
the video for last week's lecture, it'll tell you how to do the additional stuff on top of the stuff of the main body information that you've been doing. So well, I would get it as near to finishing as you can and then send it to me and I'll check it. Okay. Yeah, well done. Musa, how are things Cheers. with you? I'm just starting the report. Right, okay. Uh, what you do is, if you did, did you send me an introduction to check? No, I send you the summary and the evaluation and then you say right, it's okay. fine. Well, what, what we do is just, just take it bit by bit. If you think you're quite happy with your section, then carry on. But if you get to a bit where you want me to check things to make sure that's all right, just send it to me, okay? All right, calm, sort it. Right, no bother. Okay. Um, is it anybody, can I just double check? I don't, I, think, I don't think there's anybody that's got this issue. Is it anybody using a Mac? No. When... <laughs> When, when the position of reports, because that's causing problems. Yeah. Nope, that's good. That's all right then. That's fine for, that, that's fine for this class. Um, some of the other classes are using Max and then they kind of get all, basically they've got the instructions in terms of what they need to do to pass the assessment, but the Mac won't let them do it because it's a totally different format. Yeah. And what will happen is, uh, all, yeah, all the, all they think that they've got it fixed and then they send it to me. After I convert it to a word file, I know that I know the format goes out the window, and all I get is a pile of text. And so I've, I've sort of <laughs> yeah. like anybody that's on a Mac, I've got a different way for them to do it, you know, so that they don't lose everything out of it, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, well, I had a chat with you all, so we all know roughly where we are. Any general questions before I go, I go on? I'm going to go on, and I'm going to start giving. I'm going to give you the lowdown for the last assessment. Okay. I'm going to be okay. doing that. So, are there any other questions about assessments one or two just now? Because I don't want to have to jump back in the middle of doing this stuff for assessment three. I think, uh, yeah, the video seems to cover a lot. So, I find that quite comforting. That that video took a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it was about a thing. Yeah, so it should, it so it should um, you know, <laughs> cover all bases, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh -huh. Um. In some ways, I think it was better because we because of, also the background was quieter, etc. So I think sometimes that does make a difference. But um, it's a good. I've actually been I've actually been recommending that video to some of the some of the students in the other classes, uh, mainly because I can't be bothered yeah. doing another one with exactly the same stuff on it. So <laughs> you know, so we we'll go there with that. Fair okay. Right. So what so what basically what we're going to do? Okay, as, we, as I'm going to put up on here for sharing, uh, right, just get, let's get to that, here we go, so we're now on the, the actual screen. From here I'm going to put up a PowerPoint. Now, I need to give you a little bit of background to this last assessment because we've had to change it slightly because of the current situation. Okay, I was hoping that you would get away with uh, basically preparing the stuff and then not doing anything else, but no. It's been decided with a, a tactic has been a tactic has been made up in order to set the assessment, but I've changed it slightly, so it'll reduce it'll reduce any anxiety if any people are not too good at don't think they're any good at uh, basically presenting. So this initially this assessment initially was a group presentation, and in it each person had to cover one of the character uh, uh, sorry get it right uh, basically one of the businesses that you were looking at and the types of social media. So I've changed it slightly and then I'll explain the differences as we go on. So I'm just going to basically put this up just now. Again, I'll send you a copy of this at, at the end of the session along with your email. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so although it says group discussion, in the context of this class, you're looking at it individually. Okay, is everybody clear on that? Yep. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay. Business communication. Okay, so the, the presentation has to be formal, which means don't use slang, don't use any uh, 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 abridged words, don't use, don't use um, abbreviations, etc. Okay, so therefore it's formal. You need, to, you need to treat it as such. The information has to be accurate, coherent. If you don't know what we mean by coherent, it means it must be together, it must make sense. But logical, yeah. Logical as well, yeah, okay. And it has to be given a varied emphasis. Now that means that you'll maybe you'll maybe you you'll maybe make points on different things within your presentation because you feel they're important, rather than talking the same way all the way through. 
The language is appropriate for the purpose in the audience. You decide what the purpose is, okay? And then, uh, then change it accordingly, and that'll be my, my, that's the one. And it also takes in the account, the contributions of others. Now, what this means is basically, is you're going to get asked questions, and you need to do your best. You need to answer your best, the, the, the best of your ability. That's the official criteria. That's the way the SQA word that. But, to, but basically, but to use it as a say on who wants to be here, we don't want to give you that. So we're going to give you it mostly make sort of mostly straightforward language. Okay. So, you need to prepare a five minute presentation on social media in today's business. Now, you can do it in two ways. You can concentrate on how social media in general is used, or you can concentrate on a particular company using different types of social media. I leave it entirely up to you. As long as it comes under the heading of social media in today's business world, that's fine. It's up to you to decide the way that you want to do this. Every, does everybody understand that clearly? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Bear in mind, it's a five minute presentation. That does not, uh, it's amazing how much you can see in five minutes, but I'll come back to that in a wee bit later. You will be assessed on your listening skills as well as your talking skills. Okay. And as I said before, You'll present your findings individually and you'll also answer questions based on your presentation. Now, as you probably gathered, this presentation is based on what you're doing for your report. So therefore, get the information you need from the presentation, for your presentation from that. Okay? You might find, depending on what the way you decide to do it, that you maybe need to do a little bit more research to get things a wee bit deeper, but that is your call on it. A lot of this is, is on technique and presenting. Although the content is important, as long as it basically covers the topic, that's okay. But as I'm going on, I'll explain a few things that you really need to get, you need to, really need to be wary of. Yeah. Okay, three stages, three different bits to this. Plan it, prepare it, and then you present it. Okay, and each part is equally as important as the other. I've lost count of the amount of people, and you, you can be honest with me if you want to on this one. How many people when they're doing a presentation sit down the night before it and say, yeah, I need to do this, and maybe spend about an hour on it, and then say, yeah, that'll do, and then go in the next day and wing it? <clears throat> yeah, I've done that. You've done that, Scott, yeah. It doesn't, work, it doesn't, it doesn't I've, I've usually work out very well, does it? <laughs> Not done that before. Yeah. Aye, I think everybody's done it at some stage. I know I did it. I know I did it when I was a lot younger as well. You know, but, um, the the funny thing is, when it comes to a like, formal business business presentation, you will find that the more preparation you put in, the better the result. Bear in mind that normally the situation is that whoever you're doing this presentation for knows what the, what you should be talking about, or knows a fair bit about it already. So if they've got previous knowledge, you should realise that you need to be up to a certain standard on this. If it comes across that you don't know what you're talking about, that's going to, it's going to be very, very noticeable very, very quickly. Are we okay on that so far? We'll move on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so what do we do? The objectives. You need to decide what you're actually going to do with this presentation. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to, what's the purpose of it? It's a, this is a bit like going back to the evaluation. Is it input, inform, persuade, highlight, entertain? Or was it a mixture of them? You don't, unlike with the, unlike with the, the evaluation, where you had to write it down, you don't have to write it down. But in your mind, you need to, you need to understand exactly what you're trying to do with this. So this is why it's quite important to decide what, you're, what, what the presentation is all about, apart from the topic. Depending on how, you, depending on what purpose you think the purpose of the presentation is going to be, you will approach it in a different way. If I was going to do an info, uh, a presentation on informing and educating someone, I would tackle that totally different from someone if I was trying to entertain them. Uh, okay, so just to make you aware of the fact that this, this is all about your preparation. It's not what you're putting down in uh, putting down the paper at the moment. Are we okay? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Right, let's go on. Can you just use, Alan, 
Can you just can you just use what you've had in your report? But obviously, you might need to expand on certain points. Obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that a wee bit later, Ashley, as we're going through it. <laughs> okay. okay. Right. Sorry. So here's the questions. I've touched on some of these already. How much are your audience going to know already? Will they understand all the terminology I use? So if there are a bit, particularly their terms, right? For instance, if this was a presentation on economics, they might mention it. They might use the term GDP. So I guarantee that if somebody goes on about GDP all the time, at the end, somebody's going to say, what does GDP stand for? If you don't know what it is, you've got a problem. <laughs> so, you need to, so you need to understand what it is you're saying and understand roughly, particularly what it means. Okay? And how it fits in. And also, what is their attitude going to be to what I say? Because if you think about it, if you're doing it, if you're carrying out a presentation and you're going on and on and on about EU, UK, Brexit, uh, Article 50, if it was a legal presentation, a lot of people might be, might be kind of scoping. Mean, I'm not really sure what that is or what that stands for or whatever it is. So for that reason, you need to be on the, on the money. You need to make, make it as straightforward as possible. The way I normally do it is I assume that the person that's going to watch, be watching this presentation knows nothing. They've never sat down, they've never covered anything. If you if you take that, I always find if you take that approach, then you're least likely to get you know, what you would class as being straightforward questions at the end of it. You're more likely to get uh, questions that are maybe a bit more involved. And better than that, your audience will have a better idea in terms of what, what you're covering. It'll be easier to understand. Yeah. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Next stop. Okay, so now planning. Decide what's going to be in your presentation. Double check what you've been asked to do. Don't think, oh, I know what it is and carry on. The amount of times people have sent me information in. Um, in fact, there's one student from another class that sent me information in the other day. I think I've done my presentation. Can you check this? And I went back and I went, well done. There's only one, only a few slight problems here. You've no answered that one, you've no answered the question. Two, you've got that much information on it. It's going to take you 15 minutes at least to read it all out. Okay, and understand it. Go back and look at the brief again. So you need to eat bear in mind what you're being asked to do. Okay. This is the important yeah. one. Spend, spend plenty of time getting to know your topic. If there's anything about what you're going to put in here that you're not sure or understand, <laughs> I'm here to help. Ask me. Okay? If you can't find if there's something you need information on and you can't find it, ask me. Or if I know a place where you can get that information, it'll help you out and let you know what it is. Okay? As you, as, you, as you should have done the majority of the research on this for your report, it shouldn't be too difficult for you to decide what your presentation should contain. And it might be a case of, Ashley, as you said earlier on, it's maybe a case of maybe fl flushing things out a little bit, putting a, additional information in to cover the point a bit more clearly. Uh, okay. Or um, just putting the basics, speaking about the basics, but having your notes if we can add to them. Right, okay. I'll come to that, see when we come to the actual putting together the presentation and the situation with the notes, I'll go into that in a bit more detail so you get a better understanding of what we need. Okay. Notes, there you go, how's that for timing? Right. <laughs> Make sure your notes are in order. Right, okay. How many people, uh, when, you've, when you've used our Right, let's be honest, how many people when they've done a presentation before have just read off the board? Nobody's admitting that. Uh, I would like to think I try not to do that. <laughs> right, okay, fair enough. How many people have had notes in their hands and they've read directly off the notes? No. I've done a mixture of the board. Right, okay. So it could be, sometimes it's a mixture of both, to be honest, for some people. But... The, the problem is, the more perfect, when you get to a more professional standard, you shouldn't be doing that as much. How many of you have used cue cards before? Yeah, I think I've used them before. Right, does, any, anybody, does anybody, is anybody else unclear what we mean by a cue card? If you're not sure what it is, say to me and I'll explain it. 
Okay, nobody's saying anything, so I'm assuming you all know what a cue card is. Aye. Okay. To make it point, make it point your cue card will have on it the main additional points that you wish to cover. And it's a card that pretty much will fit in their hand. Yeah, Just a bit of paper, something like that. Tiny. An envelope, right? Give you tiny like that. bits of information. That kind of thing. And you, it's not full of notes. What it has, uh, what it's got on it, it's got main main additional information that you want to cover. But you'll maybe do it in one lines, basically single lines. But the, the important thing is it has to relate to what you've got on the screen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I'll show you. I'll show you an, exa an example or something. And you know the end to show me, but the must link. The notes must link with what you've actually got in your presentation. That means you don't put masses of information on your, on your basically in your notes or on the screen. I'll give you guideline on that in a minute. Okay. Um, the stuff you've got in your cue cards or the, no or, or the notes you're going to submit to me, but I'll explain you how you do that, will actually cover the, the, say, the additional information. It's just it's just basically a system of prompts and uh, that you can use in order to expand on the points you have in the actual presentation. Okay, introduction. Say who you are and also mention that you will take questions at the end. Also see what the, what the presentation is about. So when you're doing, when you're doing your introduction, it would, be, it would be, hello, good afternoon, my name's Ashley, and today we're going to look at social media and business. If you have any questions, we'll deal with that at the end of the presentation. That's your introduction, and the fact that you're saying that the questions will be at the end. We would then move on to your first section, and then do it step by step, depending on how many slides you've got. Okay, and before you finish, sorry, before you finish, you have to basically you have to summarise on what basically what you looked at. At the end, you would say that's the end of the presentation. In the presentation, we've covered social media, different types of social media, and how the effect they have on business. We'll now basically we'll now we'll, we'll now open to any questions. And then your last, very last slide should be nothing on. I have nothing on it apart from a caption saying any questions, and you'll see that because I put one at the end of this. Are we okay so far? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Right, okay, right. Right, layout. This is where a lot of people go wrong. Text, not too much text on one slide. Either, my guide is normally five or six single points on one slide, maximum. Or, maybe two or three with a bit more detail. It will depend on what basically what you're trying to cover. Please speak off slide. That means do not stand there looking at the board. You should yeah. be looking at your audience. Okay. You have to include graphics, which should be relevant and interesting. Now, if you're in a situation where, if I get a presentation in and it's all text with no graphics, it's going to get it's going to do a boomerang and bounce back. Okay, you have to put in visual information. That's what a PowerPoint's all about. Yeah, exactly. Okay, right. The design that you use in the background is to make it quite subtle. Don't do anything that's really, really loud, because more people pay attention to the, the design more than what's actually on the on, on the slides. And also use transitions between slides. And I can't put it in any but any larger text. Do not use Star Wars. If you do not know what I mean by transition, I will show you. Okay, but it's a way that you go, basically you get movement between from one slide to another. And that Star Wars is like the clock swipe or something like that. Yeah. No, no, it's like it's like the, the title the title sequence of Star Wars. Yeah. But it, it all comes in from the middle and goes, goes into the screen and moves up and down. Yeah, that can be it takes yeah. forever, and after you see four slides like that, you want to kill the person that's done the presentation. Uh, Monotonous. Are we okay? Any questions on that? No. No, I'm okay. No, it's all good. Right, all good, right, fine. Right, what do you think of that? If somebody put that up in a slide for you, what are your immediate, what are your immediate impressions? Bored. Not too much. Not too much, right. much information. No yeah, anything enough. else? No big enough for to see. 
I'll be honest with you, if you look at it closely, you will find that the majority of the text doesn't make sense, for one thing. Because right. it's just sample text that's been put up there. But it's an idea of how they're taking a document and they've just actually made a slide of a document and stuck it up. Yes, they've got no one. Um, no idea, you don't know what it's about. There's no, no sense of explaining succession it. or anything like that, yeah. That's it, exactly. So I would put that one I would put that one down, uh, down in, in the sort of rejection box. Anybody want to tie the, the tongue twister at the top? <laughs> Arachnidonic acid effects add that affluence and alters anab anabolism. <laughs> yeah, now get, get your tongue moving. There you go, sir. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's one. Let's go from one extreme to the other. Well, it's not actually, it's the next one. Anyway, layout. This is what we should do. Make it easy to identify information. Don't clutter it together. Make sure the colours you use are easy in the eye. Pick a half decent font. Don't go, don't, you don't want something too fancy, you don't want something too plain either. Your text size should be a minimum of size 24. That does not include headings. Headings could be anything up to, head, headings in the box at the top of your slide could be anything 36, 40, 46, whatever you like. But the actual text that you're using should be 24. Style less is more. It is better to put three main points on the screen and explain them fully so the person understands them than putting up eight and maybe explaining two half-heartedly half, half and the rest not at all. Okay, so if you need to take time by putting in more slides, etc., then by all means do that. Okay, but remember you need to, you're, you're trying to explain the basics. You've only got five minutes. Some people will say it's amazing how much you can put in in five minutes. That may be true, but I would, I would also say is it's amazing how much you think you need in five minutes and sometimes it's way too much. Exactly, yes. Okay. Uh, and at the bottom, Transitions, sound effects, GIFs, and then I've got the word really, because some people seem to forget that this is a visual aid. Putting in images, putting in tables, putting in charts, if it explains a point, put it, get it in there. But make sure the page looks, basically looks professional, and, it, and you then need to explain what's in the chart that you put in, etc. The transitions that I will cover, um, I'll actually show you how to do it if anybody's not, not sure how to do it. Okay, that's the movement from one slide to another. That's the official term for it. Okay, next up, presentations and layout. Right, what do you think of that? Um, too loud. Squashed up. Right, okay, no bother. Anything else, Mister? what do you think? Too many clothes in it. Right, okay. Anybody else? That's on. Any, what, make any comments on it? I don't see too Tasha coming in the bottom. So there'll be so uh, much still with us or not. I think too much yeah. is going on. Too much. I mean, uh, 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 Tasha, we try to say something there. No, I just say, Jay, I'm here. You're here, still there. Okay. What do you think of the slide? Too bright. Anything too else? I think it goes against the message that it's trying to convey. Okay. It's hard to. See where to focus and what point. Yeah, it's you know, too. It's <laughs> the, the expression we would use for that is it's too busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because your eyes are darting all over the place trying to figure out what goes where. <clears throat> I mean, what I would tend to do if I was doing this, see this whole square here. Keep your audience interested in all those points. I would have them, and the, I would have them in the next slide. And then mm -hmm. what I would, and then what I would do is I would move the move the graphics into the middle. So you're making more of your point of it. It cuts out a lot of the fluff, yeah. It does, yeah. It also means that you're using, you're, you're basically you're concentrating on one thing at a time rather than too many, which is how which is how your audience sometimes get either disinterested or confused. Okay, so that'll give you an idea of how, yeah, they've got the right information, but they've not thought about how they're going to actually present it. What do we think of this one? Awful. Correct. <laughs> I would agree with that. Totally correct. Yep. What's wrong with that? Uh, um, pictures are too bad. Um, far too much 
options in it. There's a, lot, there's a lot of action that's too busy. There are too many, uh, too many bits, and I'm sorry, but if I saw that, I would be oh. giving that place a total body swerve, and they're going anywhere near it to then buy uh, a new yeah, suit. Yeah, I'd be writing it off. It, right it puts away, you yeah. off. Yeah. And those eyes are really just annoying. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> Okay, in fact, in fact, probably the best bit about it is this wee John, this wee man here, that's about the only half decent thing on it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Having said that, I just noticed he's not getting any ears. Oh. <laughs> but it just shows you how you can go, you can go over the score. Because when we're saying put in graphics, that's absolutely fine, but that's just, oh, that's totally OTT. So you get the point? Yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Right. Something a lot of people don't do. Let's see if you're guilty of this one. You're running through your presentation, you're keeping a note of your time, and you know you're running late. So what you do is you get to your last slide with information, and then you just basically say, that's it. Anybody guilty of doing that? Uh, I think, yeah. I would okay. say so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Totally unprofessional. And it's, it's basically a case of, right, I've, done, I've said what I'm going to say, I'm out of here, I want to look, I want to away from this point, I just don't want to do it anymore. But it's important, particularly if you were doing this in a, meet, in, a, in a meeting or trying to pitch an idea, you need to give it a signal close. You see, okay, that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thanks for listening. We've covered whatever it happens to be. Like you have to conclude it properly. Conclude yeah. it properly, exactly. You have to. And then after that, invite questions. Easy way to do that. Oh, sorry, it's later on. But there is, a, there is basically is a, a, I've got a page there, in fact, I'll try and get to it in a moment. Hold on. At the end, I'll come back to that. Any questions? That, you finish it with something like that. Okay. Right, now I need to go back. Yeah, okay, so, I'll just do it that way. Come down. Okay, so can I ask you, any, anybody get any comments, anything they want to ask about what we've covered so far? Uh, um, want to go. Right, okay, whoever's thought of that. Listen, what you do, do you know how to use your wee hand? Aye. Aye, if you click on that, and that way I can get people in the right order. If you don't know how to do it, go into your screen sharing bit, and there's a bit that says uh, notifications, and you do it, you get a wee hand coming up in the corner of your screen. Just, just like Musa, just done there. Yeah, Musa, what do you want to say? I was asking you if, how many slides uh, needs to be. Right, okay, that's up to you. Because everybody, okay. everybody speaks at a different rate and everybody knows how much information they want to put in it. What I would suggest you do is make up, make up a presentation covering the whole, all the information you want to put in it. Okay, then you right. might be surprised as to how many slides you've actually got. And then... Read it to your, read it to yourself, okay, and, get, and, and time yourself and see how long it takes you. And right, if it so takes okay. you five minutes, that's fine. But if you suddenly find it takes you ten or fifteen minutes, you'll need to cut it down. Right, okay. Okay, so that's what we mean by preparation is important because you really need to you need to check that the time is going to be approximately. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you have like four minutes fifty, I'm not going to fail you on ten seconds. Okay, right. or, so, or if you're or, or if you're five minutes thirty, I will, I, I'll give you a wee, I'll give you a wee bit over and under on it, you know. But right. if, like, if you do when it's ten minutes forty, I'm not passing you. It's just double your time. You see, so that's what I'm meaning. You need to get it roughly within the within the time that, that we're asking for. So, see, once you're done, do you need to like yeah. read it out to you on on Zoom or where? Where do you read it out? Right, I'm going to explain that in the end what we're going to do because it's going to have to yeah. be a bit different because this is going to be the bit that's the different, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Okay, so okay. We'll, 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 I said we'll come back to that in a minute. We'll come back to that, but I will be covering it. Okay, so I think this is that was the last one. Yeah, anything else? Okay, right. So. You made a great painting presentation, but it's not just about the content, it's all about how you deliver it, how you come across. Okay? These are also being assessed. I want, I'm, it'll be interesting, I think some of you are thinking, how are they going to do all this in Zoom? I'll explain it. Okay. Under normal circumstances, everybody in your group would ask you a question. Okay? In this circumstance, I will be asking you questions. 
if there's something that's not clear. Okay? I'm not going to ask you any trick questions, and I'm not going to ask you anything that you shouldn't know. Okay, because when it all comes down to you, you're the person that's made up the presentation, so you should know what you're putting in it. I might ask you maybe to expand on something, there might, or there might be a point that's in here that I find quite interesting. And I might say, right, can you tell me more, more about how London Zoo are using this? Because that looks, looks really interesting. That's shown me that you've done your background research. Okay? But as I say, the questions are not going to be they're not going to be difficult, they're not going to be awkward. Okay? But the, the important thing is that but just, just be aware, don't, don't, don't see them as a barrier. Just see them as a, as a way of showing that you know your stuff. Okay? Uh huh. Right, okay. yeah. If you don't know the answer, don't get flustered. Just say, I'm sorry, but I don't have that information. If you want to leave me your detail, tell me your details, I'll get back to you with that as soon as I can. That's it. Be honest. Okay? There's only one thing worse than not knowing something in a, in a presentation, and that's not knowing it and then trying to wing it. And then it becomes very, very, it becomes very, very evident that you don't know it. Aye. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So for that reason, you're better to, better to, honestly, it's a policy on this. You would not get marked down if you don't have all the information, but you admit that. And it, you, you get it for the person. But if you try, the end, try to answer the question without knowing it, you'll get marked down for that. Because you're potentially giving the wrong answer. Exactly, that's it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Give me one second, I just need to leave you for a minute. Anybody try something up, hold on. Okay, bad news, I'm back. Here we go. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that try to make a, a quick trip to the loo there, be warned, you need to be fat. If you're not fast, you're last. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So are we okay on that? Do you understand how you handle questions? Aye. Yeah, it makes total sense. Okay, all right. Again, as I say, at the end of the, if there's anything at all, you something comes to you later on, you're not sure of, say so, and we'll let you know, okay? Next up, responding to others. One way of making sure that you understand what the question actually is, is by repeating it back. Now, what I mean by that is, if the, if, it's like, say for instance, Lucas, you turned around and you said to me, it's, 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 you're, real, you're really interested in information on the Empire State Building yes. and, its, and its construction. Can you give me more, de more details on the timeline than that? So I would come, if I was answering back, I would say, okay, so to recap, recap this question, you want to know more about the timeline of the construction of the Empire State Building? And you would either go yes, or you would go no. Now, if they go no, you would then tell me exactly what it is you're looking for. Or if you say yes, then you know you've got it. And you and, and you mean you've got the right question. You've managed to interpret it correctly, and it gives you about an extra ten seconds. To see in your head. Oh, I see. There yeah, are yeah, tactics yeah. to this, okay? To yeah. Think of a way to try and get the question to make sense in your head. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And for a lot, because a lot of people just fire in, and they'll have a go at it, and then the person will go, "That's not what I asked you." <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. Okay, so it's, so it's better basically if you, if you just take that wee bit of time again, make sure you know what the question is, what they're looking for, and then go ahead and answer it. It also make, make actually also with not under normal circumstances, make your audience feel as if they're, part, they're actually part of the session. They've not just been pulled in off the street and stuck in a room and they're not, they're not going to take part, so. Uh, it's a kind of interactive. Is, yeah. Absolutely. I'll, I mean, some yeah. people don't look at presentations this way, but they're supposed to be interactive. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's one here, like, there's nothing wrong with, I mean, if someone makes a point in a question, after you've answered it, say, what does anybody else think? Yeah. Okay, True. that is absolutely fine to do in a presentation. Just don't do it too often. Ah, uh yeah. -huh. Unless, you're, unless you're about two minutes under and you need to waste the time, but apart from that, Okay, but um, it's, a, so it's, a, it's a case of, just think about it that way. I mean, I'll give you an example. Some of my, some of, uh, uh, my classes, 
I taught sociology up to a few years ago, and I managed to get a hold of. Uh, I, get, I thought I thought I lost it. I made it up years and years ago, and it was it was called "Who Wants to Be a Sociological Millionaire?" And what we did in the middle in the middle of the, uh, the actual presentation, I'd, I'd embedded this into it. And I went, right, so you're all saying, yeah, we understand that, yeah, we understand that, I went, fine, right, go on, ten, win a million. And they went through it question by question. The class absolutely loved it, but, hmm. more, but more importantly, they understood what all the terms meant by the end of it. You know, so getting getting the rest of the class involved can really help. That's, yeah, definitely. Okay, so that's what we mean. Uh, use an, do, do, do you all know what we mean by an open, sorry, by an open question? Does anybody know it? Oh yeah, I know what an open question is, yeah. Okay, Ashley, do you know what an open question is? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember, that's all that's okay. Scott, do you know what it is? Um, probably not. That's all right, no problem, mm. Tasha. Um, no. No, that's fine, that's all right, and Zane. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know what it is, okay, tell me what it is. <laughs> you know, Why are you asking me, don't ask anyone else? He, he asked him. Uh, you, like, yeah, you, yeah, the thing is, Zane, you're the only one that turned around and you said, yeah, yeah I know what it is. It's a matter that is not yet decided or is unable to be decided. I said, where did you get that from? No, uh, open questions, right. Open questions is questions that are left to, that have more than one interpretation, I think. Yes. Is it it's historical questions? That. Right, okay, thank you, that's me now. That's how, may, how many of you have taken part in a quiz before? In fact, yeah. better than that, you've been asked to take part in a survey. And the majority, yeah. of, the, the majority of the questions might be yes or no answers. And yeah. then you, get, you then you get to a question where they say, "What do you think?" Uh, question one: Have you been Have you been to Ibiza? Yes, you've answered. Question two: What What do you think of the facilities in the, in, in the main resorts in Ibiza? The, the, that, that means there are many different answers, and it's up to you so to put what do you think. So a closed question oh, is a yes or no. An open question is one in which you can put in your own opinions. Does that help? Uh -huh. Yeah. Right, okay, good. Absolutely. Right. You can always run this back and check it again if you forget. Okay, next up. The most important thing you can do is prepare. I can't emphasise that enough. Okay? Bring notes, but do not just read them. Your notes, don't, you shouldn't have everything on your notes. You should, be, you should have looked over the stuff that often that's in your head, but what you've got in your notes sort of trigger that so you remember what you were talking about in that area. It's just prompts, basically. Basically prompts, yep. Okay. You can put some information like what I would do is if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna read out a quote, put the quote in the notes or in your cue card. So you don't get the quote wrong. Okay, so you can use it when you, it's, it's, it's for expanding the information that you've got on the screen. Okay, breathe deeply and try not to speak too quickly. Okay, right. How many people, how many people uh, here are from the West of Scotland? Is there anybody not from the West of Scotland? Me. Okay, where are you from, Lisa? I'm from Pakistan. Very funny. Whereabouts in the UK these days? I stay here, yeah, but I, I, I moved from Pakistan. Okay, so, so where, where about are you staying here? What area? Oh, Shawlands. Shawlands, fine. Okay, so it's within Glasgow. But well, you'll, be able, you'll be able to relate what I'm going to say in a moment, okay? Because you've been, how long have you been here? Um, seven years. Right, okay, you stay here then. Right, fair enough. Okay, so <laughs> what the, situa the situation is like this people in the west of Scotland speak faster. Particularly Sorry. in the Glasgow area, much faster from other areas in Scotland. Okay, so for that reason, you need to be aware of that fact. Most people, when they start carrying out a presentation, they take a deep breath and they normally start off about 100 miles an hour and then with a bit of luck, by the time they get to slide number five, they're slowed down. Okay, no if you actually start off at, a, with a lower tone and try to speak more slowly, 
it will sound a lot better to anybody that happens to be in the room. Uh, d definitely. So it's all about technique. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry with this because if we were normally doing this in a classroom, I would be up showing you these exercises, getting you to practice them, and we'd go through all this in detail, but we can't do it over Zoom. All I can do is give you tips. Okay, face the group, do not read your slides. Okay, now under normal circumstances, you would, you would be required to operate the presentation. In this case, you are not required to operate that. You send a copy, the email a copy of it to me along with the notes you're going to use. And I will operate the slides. Perfect. Okay, so you don't need to worry about that side of it. That's the, that's the one uh, main difference that we're making between how you would normally do it. All you need to do is concentrate on how you're sounding and your delivery. You don't need to concentrate on how you use the machinery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, it's going to be kind of really kind of difficult to make contact with everybody. And so that's another th eye contact. That's another thing that we're going to have to rule out with this bit. Okay. Because it's kind of hard when you're looking, just looking at a camera and you can't give everybody eye contact, really. Exactly. Absolutely, yeah. Uh -huh. so, we so we take it from there. Okay, next up. Use your voice as a tool. Have you ever heard of the word paralanguage? Uh, I haven't. Right, okay, right. Ashley, tell me what paddle language is. I think it means if you're saying uh, certain words or you emphasise on words. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's not bad. You've got the rough idea of it. It's a proper, it's a proper uh, way that you would control rate, pronunciation, tone. And also even how you feel about things, that has a main, that has a, it's basically things related to language that we don't normally have that much control over. But when you're doing a presentation, you need to try your best to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and enunciation, projection and syllables. Okay, so if you were in a room with 10 people, you would maybe speak at a certain rate. But if you were in a room with, if you were in a room with 100 people, you would change the way that you would approach that. Your projection would need to be a lot, really a lot stronger. And in terms of what you're saying, you would need to be a lot clearer. So that whoever's sitting right in the back of the, right in the back of the room can hear you. So that's what we're doing in regard to that. Under normal circumstances, we would, do, we would get you not to do this one. Remember your body language. Do not use T-Rex arms. If you don't know what T-Rex arms are, I don't even know if you can see me doing this or not, but um, yeah, right, it's okay. basically how a T-Rex has got their arms tucked in at their sides. And they're, they're actually just, they're basically just got their, uh, just got their claws uh -huh. movement, limited movement to your arms. That's what we mean by T-Rex arms. It doesn't look very good. No. Yeah, you really have to like, uh, do like lots of gestures and stuff. Exactly, that's but, it. And most yeah. people do that. Without even realising, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Here's another one that a lot of people do. They use mm and air eh as filling, uh, filling in words because they don't like silences. So they're covering a point and they'll go, mm -hmm. well, when we're going on to the next bit, mm, uh, right, well, the next, the next topic is to use it almost to break the silence and they do it unconsciously. I know it's slightly different, but in an interview, you that's also taking into consideration the way you use pauses. Yeah, how you use pause, using a pause. If you're using it to think about to think about things, it's saying, different. Yeah. It's different from using. Uh, uh, I've just done it there, using filler words. So you don't have. So you don't have uh, basically clear air. Uh, what's the word? Blank air. What do you want to call it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So and that's the next one. Use strategic pauses. Right. One of the things under normal circumstances you would have to do is move from slide to slide. This is where you can use a pause from basically to your advantage. If you complete one slide or you move to complete one topic and you're going to move to another one, if you pause, it serves a double function. One, it gives the people that have been listening to your presentation time to take, take the information in. And it also gives you a time to get organised for the next slide that you're going to use. In your thoughts. So what a, what a lot of people do 
is when they're actually doing their notes, they actually put the pauses down in their notes. So they would write, write the additional information they want to say for slide number one. And then in big in red letters they'll put pause. Just to remind themselves to do that. That 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 but they can gather their thoughts. I say the, the audience can gather their thoughts, and then when, once they're ready, they would move on to, to the next slide. The same thing happens um, if you have to manually operate the, uh, the machine to change slides. Normally your pause is when you would do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's really, really important. If you if you're at a long maybe six slides worth of information, but it's still got the title sheet, title up on the screen, that's not going to look good. But also, it's also not going to pass. Yeah, okay, so there's a lot that you need to be aware of. But that's one of the reasons why when they said you will take that bit away from you to put you under less pressure. We'll do it based on what you've given us. So based on the copy of the uh, presentation we've got and, and the notes that you're copy, the copy of the notes you're going to use that we have. That'll allow us to gauge when you should you should be moving from slide to slide. Okay. As I said before, know your stuff, that's really important. And come across as genuine. Don't try to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many, how many people do that. Okay. It comes across better that way. That better, better that way. If you, if you, you take that approach. Okay. Next up, listening skills. Listening skills. Be prepared to listen. You do not know everything. If you open something for questions and someone happens to be an expert in that particular area and they clearly know more than you and you recognise that fact, ask them questions. Ah, right, okay. Okay. If you're going to, if you're going to be given an insight, or like you say, hey, yeah, I used to have that job years ago. Well, oh, right, fine. Ask them a couple of questions about it. Not only will it, not only will it help enhance your presentation, but it'll also give more information to the other people that are in the audience. Keep an open mind. You cannot be right 100% of the time. In fact, you'll probably find that most of us can be right 50% of the time. Yeah. Okay, so the way to the fact that there are people do have every different ideas on things. They might, you might not think they're right, you might think they're talking a lot of rubbish, but at least give them the respect to let them know, at least you recognise it's an idea. And that means on again for listening for the main ideas. The last one, resist the distractions. If somebody's coughing in the background, we'll get back to who wants to be a millionaire now, aren't we? You're trying to present a presentation and somebody's going <coughs> in the background. Okay, um, just ignore it and try and work on If it happens repeatedly, normally in an assessment situation, the, um, the, the lecturer would turn around and say, out, and put them out of the room. Go and get a drink of water or something. To help it, because it's not fair on the, on the person that's actually presenting. <coughs> okay. I would imagine the main problem is in a Zoom course going to be background noise. <laughs> well, we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. Hopefully not. I mean, to be honest with you, that this class pretty much as a whole, there's very little background noise. Um, I can understand Zane having slight problems if he's in his car and he's working. So, but we need we, we, we need to take these things into account as best we can. Okay, so stick like, this is yeah. more to do with a group meeting, so we don't really need to look at that. You can if you want to, but if you're ever in a situation where you need to do a, a group presentation, that would apply. Okay, questions, I'll forget what to say, so bring notes with you. Okay, but not pages and pages of web printouts and have them organised so that you know this applies to slide one, this applies to slide two, all the way up to how many slides you're going to use. Okay. Everybody will laugh at, it, laugh at you. Will they? They'll be too worried about what's going to happen when they do it. <laughs> so, bear that, so bear that in mind. And they say, so no one will laugh. Anybody that does laugh if someone's coming up, and my, and basically my groups get kicked out. Okay. Showing total disrespect to others. To, to other Aye, totally. Yeah. yeah. Unless, of course, you're making a joke in a really young presentation and laughing at that, that's fine. Okay, but that'd be that'd be sort of like few and far between, I would think. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll be too nervous. Well, some names can actually be a good thing. See if you think of... See if you, see if you think of a, of a situation where... I'm trying to think of what... Yeah, right, okay. Performance athletes, like um, Usain Bolt, they have a procedure that they go through prior to any, prior to any races, or even footballers before they go into the park. And what they do is they try and psych themselves up, as we would know by... Now, what that's actually doing is that's putting them on, themselves on edge a little bit before they go out to the park uh, or, or into the stadium. Because if you have that edge, you actually ben it benefits you. You think clearer, your sight is a lot sharper, your hearing increases by about 20, 20 to 30% in terms of accuracy. And these are all things that when you're doing a presentation can help you. But it's a case of just be aware of that. So being nervous is not a bad, it's not a bad thing. When most people, the nerves will settle down after a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's true. And it can also play a big part and actually how well you do with it as well. I exactly, think. that's it, yeah. So you hear a lot of performers going on about how nerves like, tend to make, bring the best out in them. Absolutely, yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it, can be, it, it can be really, really, it can be really, really useful. I remember one, to, uh, well, this is going back a bit, but it's going back a lot. Um, I used to be a, a radio DJ at one stage, years and years ago. And we were covering a football match at one of the stadiums in Glasgow. And the idea was it was going to be an ex-player was going to cover a penalty kick competition at half time. Now the situation was he took note well about 20 minutes before that. I personally just think he bottled it. Anyway, I was asked to do it. And because it happened that quickly, I didn't have any time to think about it. And it wasn't until I was out in the centre circle in the middle of a stadium filled with 50,000 people that I suddenly thought, oh dear, I'm a bit nervous here. <laughs> but again, I tried to, I, I calmed myself down before I started, took it step by step, and it went, it went, it went absolutely fine. Okay, so nerves sometimes can benefit you. Mm -hmm. uh, most definitely. Yeah. In fact, that, that, in fact, that one passed so fast. Uh, that um, it, was, it was almost like in a blink of an eye, although it was actually out there for the 15 minutes. Okay, so nerves really can benefit you at times. So I just, I get embarrassed when people are looking at me. Believe me, they're not looking at you. You just think they are. Okay, they again, again, they're more worried about what they're going to be doing. If it's, in, if it's in a group. But the more practice and preparation you have, it'll make you more confident. You get to the point you won't really care. You'll be, you'll be standing up there doing absolutely fine with no bother. You'll be thinking, looking at them and going, poor suckers, you've still got to do this. Okay, so, and you shall soon be finished. If you don't know what to talk about, you've not, you've not researched enough. Okay, so make sure that you understand what you're going to be saying and what it's about. It's really important. Okay, as I said before, I don't know how to give a presentation. Practice and time yourself. It's the only way you're going to learn. And it's amazing how many students do not practice and they do not time themselves beforehand. Oh, I can imagine. There was one, there was one uh, engineering student oh, about four years ago now. Great student in class, fine. I came across totally articulate, but she was as nervous as hell when it came to doing presentations. And I had a wee chat with her before that. And I said, okay, how do you feel about this? She says, I'm not sure if I've got enough material. And I looked at what she prepared. And I think, I, I, I thought, I would actually be more worried about the fact you've got way too much material. And it so happened that when she actually did the presentation, she was four and a half minutes over. So I had to go back to her and say, look, you're going to have to do it again. You're not near enough the timing target on this. Um, so, for, so for, she said, but I, did, she, I didn't think it would take me that long to do it. When I practiced, it was a lot shorter than that. I went, yeah, but as you relax, you relax as you're going on in the presentation, and sometimes you'll bring in more detail that you remember, but it's not actually in the notes. So therefore, you're adding stuff in as you're going, so it's going to take longer. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, um, so again, it's just, it, this practicing, I can't even emphasize that enough, that really helps. And you might not like this, even even trying video yourself doing it, 
you will learn a lot about how you come across when you're doing a presentation, if you can run it back and watch it. Funnily enough, I actually did do that for um, John Bay's John B's last name yeah. Q, and it did yeah. help me a lot, because we it had does. to do a presentation on that one as well. Sometimes you're not. Uh, sometimes it's a case of you're not. You're not aware of things that you do. It may be that you maybe use a certain term all the time when you're speaking. You're yeah. not aware of it. The only way you're going to learn from it is if you notice it. Okay, so it really does help. Okay, reasons for not achieving. Help if I get the thing right. That's it. Okay. Not having your slides ready. You don't need to worry about the slides. You're giving them to me. I'll do the timing on that. The slides are not suitable. If you put a slide on that has only two words on it and nothing else, that is not a slide. That's just basically too many statements. It would be not enough. You would, you, ideally, you would put something else on the slide to bring that up. Okay, and not knowing the subject clearly enough, make sure you do. Reading directly off notes, that's enough to fail you. Reading directly off the screen, that's enough to fail you. Not making eye contact, under the circumstances, we waive that one. Okay. Speaking too quickly, watch your timing and watch the pace that you're talking at. As I say, not being able to answer questions. I would change that slightly to not being able to answer questions constantly. In other words, if every second question you don't know the answer to, it indicates that you've not prepared. Okay, everybody can have one question that they're not clear on, that's fine, but if you ask five and it's only one, that's all right. But if you ask five and you don't know the answer to four of them, that's getting a bit, that's getting a bit ridiculous. Okay, so are you ready? What you can do to help yourself? Prepare a checklist to make sure, make sure you've covered all the points. Make sure you have a backup copy of your presentation. How many people are wanting to do a presentation and then they suddenly realise it was on their pen drive and they've left it at home? That is bad preparation. Yeah. Okay. And that, and that, that and, and to be honest with you, if somebody, I would normally see a student if they said that to me at the beginning, I mean, do you have a copy on your email? And they'd say, yeah, I'd say, fine, download the copy of your email and do it then. But if they turn around and say, no, I don't, I say, well, bad, I'm not going to field your first attempt because there's no way to proceed. Okay. Here's an important one. Please know how to pronounce words correctly and what they mean. I remember back at school when we all had to do a play and we all suffer mind blanks occasionally when we do these things. And this girl, this girl basically was chatting away about a subject and it involved different viral diseases. And she turned around and she, 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 she said, of course, uh, the, the vast majority of cases in this country are pneumonia instead of saying pneumonia. All oh, right, okay. Because she literally pronounced it as, it, as the word is actually spelled. But as you can imagine, that caused a total lottery of people laughing. I really felt for her. I felt as if she wanted to go if, basically to open up and swallow her. You know, but so you, you need to make sure that you know how to say words and what they mean, because there's a fair chance you'll be asking your questions. What does that mean? Okay. Go over your notes carefully before you actually do the presentation to make sure there aren't any mistakes. And then ask somebody else to check them. Because it's amazing how you can, uh, you can forget. Incidentally, your notes, please type them, do not handwrite them. Okay, and then take a deep breath and don't worry, it'll all be over before you know it. Okay. Can I just say to you, I am not looking to fail anybody. If you're gonna if you're gonna fail or be unsuccessful in this, it'll be all down to you. It's not gonna be down to me. Uh -huh. I will do all my, I'll do the best I can to get you through. But if I if I keep asking you a question or asking you about a topic recurrently and you're still giving me the wrong answers is that I can only go so far. Okay, so please be aware of what, no in detail what you're going to be talking about. Okay, end of presentation. Before I go over and explain to you exactly how we're going to do this, does anybody have any questions in general about what we've covered? Uh, no, I can't think of anything. Okay, okay Ashley. 
Sorry, Scott. No, nah, you covered everything clearly. Um, okay. right. No, I'm not any questions. No. Okay, thank you for that, Ashley. Any questions? Is it possible for me to do the presentation just to you? Because I'm a bit nervous about doing it. But the but on Zoom, everybody's doing it just with me. I bet. <laughs> you know I mean? No. But you know oh, I mean? Is it, oh, is it individual? All right. Okay. I, that's, the, that's the point. We're not doing it as a group, we're doing it individually. Right. Right. Well, that's fine then. Okay, so what will what will happen is, like for instance, when we whenever the first session's decided, it depends on when people are ready. Okay, what we'll do is, if I've got five people that are ready to do a presentation, you will all be given a different time to log on to Zoom. Right. So, like, say for instance, Lucas, you were first, right. and I say to you, right, Lucas, uh, be on and prepared for one o'clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. and then it maybe takes you fifteen minutes. I might have said to Scott, Scott, you're on at 20 past one. Okay? And then yeah. get, then, then there'll be 15 to 20 minutes and then Musa, if you were ready, you, you'd be you'd be given that time. So I'll work out the times beforehand and notify you individually what they're gonna be. Yeah, that that Okay. That's cool, yeah. Okay. The only the only the only person that's going to know know what you're doing is me, and that's because I need a recording of what you're doing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For evidence here. Okay. And what will happen is I'll just basically before you're ready, I'll put the copy of the PowerPoint you've sent to me. I will put on screen. Okay? And I'll also have the copy of the notes that you've sent me beside me so I know what you're going to include in your note and your notes to go with that. So I'll know when but okay at that point you should be moving on to the basically on to the next slide. And based on what you've given me, I will make the changes when it when they're necessary. Okay. All you need to do, all you need to do is concentrate on getting your knowing your information and doing the doing it to the, your best ability to present it. Okay. I am not expecting every, I'm not expecting everybody to give me a five star performance. Okay. I do take different situations into account in terms of how I'm, how I'm marking. So depending on how it can be interpreted. Um, that might so it may well be and maybe some people if someone's say for instance if someone had a learning difficulty I would approach assessing them differently from someone that doesn't. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. I do make allowances basically individual students that I know about. Okay. Um right. So any anybody any questions in general regarding this? I'm giving you I'll give you to a week and Friday to at least have this drafted. So that means that by a week and Friday you can turn to, you can you can send me in something to look at. If you do, if you if you if you go ahead and you try to do it and then you're not sure, send it anyway and we'll check it. Okay. I've already I've already got some people in some of my other classes that are sending me in stuff. Um but unfortunately in a couple of cases they've not, they've totally not really misread their question. So it's important that you get that right. Okay, so if there's anything you're not if there's anything you're not sure about, then that, that, that you're, not, you're not sure about, just just contact me and I'll clear it up as best I can. Okay, anybody get anybody get any final questions before we finish up? I I asked you earlier, um, my PowerPoint. Can I just use notes from my report? I'll say you tweak them here and there. I would not use a straight copy. You put, you probably need. You can use the, You can use the report. The, the notes in your report as your as your starter for it, Ashley. Aye, but you, might find, Aye. but you might find because you're actually going to be speaking it rather than writing it down, you'll need to approach it in a different way. Aye. Just bear that in mind. Okay. Aye, okay. Okay. Anybody else get any other questions regarding this? No, uh, I do want to say though, like. Uh, I don't have a learning disability, but I do have uh, Asperger's, which can make. I know. I don't want to know all about Asperger's, Lucas. I worked. I worked in an Asperger's unit for about four years, so I'm I, I'm oh, aware nice. of the different interpretations of it. Okay, so again, that would be take that again. That would be taken into account. What I do is I go through what we've got. Every uh, most some students have got what we call a PL, a PSP, 
And what we do, I check them all through before I do assessments and bring it into your into your account because I know some people are allowed more time for different things. Or whatever, or whatever's needed. Yeah, I definitely have that. Uh, what you're okay, talking about? No problem. Yeah, yeah. No bother. Okay. The rest of you, anybody get any questions they'd like to ask before we finish up? No, I'm okay. Okay, uh, thank yeah, you, Sasha. Right, good, thank yeah. you. Okay, right, okay, so what I'm going to do is I will be put, um, with a little up within a couple of hours, a copy of this will be up on YouTube, as we've been doing. Well, Has anybody been accessing the videos? Has anybody been looking yeah. at them? I have. Yeah. Um, that, that big video, I've been using that, like, in steps. Yeah, good. Um, that's because I mean I, I've been really quite and I'm really quite chuffed at the, the amount of uh, viewings I've been getting back, particular particular for some of them. Um, so I'll keep doing it as long as it's useful. Yeah, and this one will. Well done. I yeah. definitely will be looking back at this one. Yeah. Right, okay, you definitely be looking back at this one, right? No bother. Okay, no problem. Uh -huh, so just your, your your video is cutting out here and there a wee bit, Lucas. I think you've got some wee signal problems. Yeah, I think my Wi-Fi is not great today. No, <laughs> right, okay, fair enough. Okay, listen, if anybody's got any issues about anything at all, please don't hesitate to contact me, okay? We'll take it from there. I'll ch we'll check in next week. We'll see how, every how everybody's doing with this. And if there's any questions you've, ca you've maybe came across and you're not sure how to do something, then you can basically say to me, Ashley, are you okay about how to do the appendices now? Does that give you a bit of an idea? Aye, 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 and that's all you said. That yeah, well, remember, remember, you can play this back because it's going to be on the video anyway. Right. You can listen to it again if, you, if there's anything you can't remember for what I said. Right, that's fine. Okay, okay, folks, that's us for today. Thanks, for, thanks very much for uh, for coming in. And I say, uh, if you need any help, just let me know. And failing that, I'll be back. I'll be back. And, uh, I'll, I'll give you details about next week's session as soon as it, as soon as I've got it organised. Okay.